let's look at the normal approximation for binomials. Now, as the name suggests, for large n, my binomial distribution looks approximately normal with a center of n times p. n is the number of trials, p is my probability of success, and a standard deviation of the square root of n times p times q. Again, that's number of trials, probability of success, and then q is my probability of failure. We say for large n because binomials are kind of blocky, so it takes a lot of samples before that starts to look nice and smooth. In particular, it takes usually about until the point when you have n times p and n times q bigger than or equal to 10. n times p, this is the expected number of successes. So ideally, I should expect 10 or more successes. And n times q, this is expected number of failures. So requiring both of these things to be bigger than 10 is essentially the same as making sure I have enough blocks on both sides of this bell curve to make it look nice and smooth. So here's a scenario. It's claimed that you should win a specific scratcher lottery thing that they have 20% of the time. Knowing this, how likely would it be to win 40 times or more out of 160 scratchers? Let's list everything that we know just by kind of reading this thing. They're telling me the probability that I should win the game is 20%. So this means the probability of losing the game should be 80%. I am playing the game 160 times, so that's my sample size there. And the question is asking me, what is the likelihood that I win, that my count x is 40 or more? So before I try to use this model up here, I'm just going to check, is n large enough to use the normal model? And if my n is not large enough to use this normal model, then I would stick to using binomials. So let's check. I'm going to do n times p. I have 160 trials times my 20% success rate. And that gives me 32 anticipated wins. That's bigger than 10. I'm going to do n times q. 160 times 0.8. Now this is larger than the two probabilities. So if this is bigger than 10, this is definitely going to be bigger than 10 as well. So I'm in the clear. But just as an observation, your expected number of successes and your expected number of failures should add up to your total number of trials. So if you type this into your calculator, I believe you get something like 128 or so, because the two of these numbers together add up to 160. Just a little trick to do uh, double check your math as you go along. So yes, it is large enough to use the normal model. So I'm going to answer the question of x being bigger than or equal to 40. And I'm going to use a normal model with an average of n times p and a standard deviation of the square root of n times p times q. I don't plug anything in for x here. This is telling me I'm dealing with counts, and it matches up with my question. I don't plug anything in for capital N. That tells me that when I draw this picture, it's going to look like a bell curve. Now, lowercase p, that's my number of samples. That's 160. p, that's my success rate of 20%. And I already did n times p in this earlier step, so I actually know what this number is. My standard deviation is 160 times my success rate, 20% times my failure rate, 80%. When I typed this part into my calculator earlier, I got 32. So that means on my curve here, I'm anticipating 32 wins. Now let's see how much this is going to deviate. When I type this into my calculator, I get 5.06 or so. So this would be about 37.06-ish. And on the other side, I would subtract 
my value of interest is 40, so that looks like it's more than one standard deviation, but probably less than two standard deviations away. And I want 40 or more. So I have my model, I've drawn my picture, I'm going to find my z-score, and then I'm gonna look that z-score up using either a table or technology, whatever you're comfortable using. To find the z-score, you're gonna take the value that you care about. This is true for any normal distribution. It's gonna be the same setup. You're taking the value that your question is about, minus whatever the center is for your model, divided by whatever the standard deviation is for your model. So in this case, the question was about 40. The center or the average of my model was 32. And my standard deviation was 5.06 or so. Typing this into a calculator, it looks like I get 1.58 as my z-score. Now, I prefer looking up my z-scores using a table, but again, whatever you're comfortable with. And going to my normal table here, I'm going to see where the 1.5 row meets the eight column. 1.5 meets the eight here at a table value of 0.9429. Now, if you've never used a table before, just a quick note, this is a grid. You're looking up the first two digits of your z-score here, the last digit of your z-score here, and you're seeing where they meet. 1.5 met the eight at 94.29%. Whatever this number is inside of the table, this is always the area to the left of your indicated value. So in the case of our curve, this means I have 94.29 in the white region that I don't want. So to get the area to the right of 40, I'm gonna take one minus the table value. The opposite of to the left is to the right, so one minus. And doing so gives me 0 0.0571 or so. So there's about a 5.71% chance that I win 40 out of 160 lottery scratchers, assuming that the true probability is 20%. I could have done the same thing using binomials, but if I keep using my calculators to do binomials, eventually if I do this with a large enough n, your calculator is gonna to try to calculate something with so many little small steps that it no longer works. So for a really, really large n, the normal approximation is definitely going to be the way to go there. So hopefully this gives you some new skills and uh, gets you a little bit more comfortable with the normal approximation for binomials.